In this video, I want to say a few words about standalone shopping cart options. I don't want to make it sound like WordPress is the only way to go when it comes to complete shopping carts. Of course, there are many, many alternatives. And it's important for you to ask the right questions at this point to decide whether there might be better options for you outside of WordPress plugins. So let's look at development costs, for example, just briefly. What does it take to get the store running, to get it looking the way you want it? WordPress will have some development costs. Unless you are capable of doing it yourself, you're going to have some costs to get it exactly the way you want it or to buy a theme that looks exactly the way you want it. Keep in mind, even with standalone shopping carts where it's hosted on another server, say, and they've got their templates, you may still have to do some development costs there in terms of getting it to exactly the point you want it. Then there's the issue of ongoing costs. Of course, for many standalone shopping carts, there's going to be an ongoing monthly fee. And one of the attractions in WordPress is that you can get free plugins that don't have those ongoing costs. So maybe upfront development costs for WordPress are offset by the fact that you're not paying ongoing fees. So that's something to consider. The feature set. I mean, WordPress plugins have fairly sophisticated features these days, and they're getting better. But there are sometimes more features available on standalone shopping carts, and we're going to see that in a little bit. Especially on the marketing end of things, maybe you don't have the skills or the budget to do certain marketing elements. On WordPress, those may have to be done by you or someone else, whereas there might be a standalone shopping cart that has some marketing features built into it. Then there's scale and scalability. How big is your store right now? And how big do you think it might get? So if you've got, say, a couple of hundred products right now, that may be fine for a WordPress plugin. But if you're expecting to move to several thousand, that might not work as well on your particular WordPress installation or that sort of thing, right? So you have to look at the future as well when deciding whether to go with WordPress or a standalone shopping cart. Now let's take a look at some of the options here when it comes to standalone shopping carts. There's two basic ones, basically the same as with WordPress, right? There's a hosted version of WordPress and there's a self-hosted. Hosted means it's on a separate server and of course it's a paid feature on shopping carts, unlike WordPress.com. You're paying for the service. And then there's self-hosted standalone shopping carts where you install the software like you do installing WordPress on your server. And in this case, there are paid and open source options when it comes to self-hosted standalone shopping carts. Let's take a look at some of these. Here's some hosted ones. These are some big players in the field these days, Big Commerce being one of them. They put a lot of emphasis on the fact that they've got sort of a turnkey solution. It's all in one. Everything's done for you. And again, that's got huge appeal for a lot of people. There is a pricing factor in all of this, right? There's a monthly ongoing cost. Here's an example of theirs. Here's an example of a feature that, you know, may well come out in certain plugins eventually in WordPress, but right now, none that I know of anyway, abandoned cart saver. It actually remembers when people have abandoned their shopping cart and left it, and you can follow up with emails for them and keep track of that. And that's a big issue with e-commerce. So perhaps that's worth it to you at $80 a month or more to have that kind of a feature. Shopify, another very popular hosted solution. One of the things about hosted solutions is you don't have any concerns about security in terms of people wanting to enter information in an insecure browser. Some people don't like that. When you're on one of these, you don't have any of those issues. You don't have to worry about it. Volusion is another one. Here's their pricing plans here. Again, something you have to ask yourself. Now, when we talk about $60 a month, it sounds like a lot when you're thinking of WordPress, which is a free solution, an open source solution. But when you're in a business, $60 a month probably shouldn't be that much because you're selling products. So you have to really think about what it's going to cost you. Pinnacle is an interesting example of a hosted solution because it also has a standalone self-hosted version. You can buy it outright and install it on your servers, and then you've got to maintain it and so on. So that's one of the issues that hosted versions solve for you, is you don't have to maintain any of it. 
Then we turn to software that you install. So this is the self-hosted paid version of things. Magento is a very common one. Again, a lot of people talk about how much work it is to get a Magento site working and to maintain it. So again, you've got to think about the ongoing costs of it. Yes, there may be ongoing costs for a WordPress plugin that was open source and free to begin with, but you're still going to have some of those issues even with a paid software that may not have exactly the support you were expecting. And then there are open source solutions for standalone shopping carts, Zencart being a fairly popular one. Again, a big learning curve to it. It's going to cost you to get a developer to come in and help you unless you can do that yourself. So you have to think about all of these issues and does this do that much more than a WordPress plugin will do for you? That's where you have to do the comparisons, do the math, and figure out exactly what it is that you need in WordPress versus a standalone shopping cart.